Did you know that Disney can ban you from the parks? They can, and they can do it for some pretty weird stuff. So let's learn about those things so you can avoid the catastrophe. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Vlog. So Disney World's got a lot of seemingly bizarre rules that if broken will get you kicked out of the parks in a heartbeat. And while these rules may not put you behind bars for the rest of your life, Disney takes them very seriously. So today we're going to see what weird rules Disney wants us to follow so we can make sure we're on our best behavior during our next visit. Plus, we're also going to learn about the things we actually can do in the parks too without receiving a slap on the hand in return. Before we get started, we've got some Disney World planning worksheets we want to hook you up with. And the only thing criminal about those is how cheap they are, as in they're totally free. A steal of a deal, one might say. So go ahead and scan the QR code you see on the screen now or head over to DisneyFoodBlog.com slash Disney plans after this. Okay, banishment worthy activity number one, stealing a character's identity. Disney World may seem like the perfect place to wear your super realistic and elaborate Cinderella cosplay outfit, but it's actually one of the things that's gonna get you kicked out of the park. Actually, cast members likely won't even let you through the front gates. So why? Well, the main problem isn't the fact that you adore a certain Disney character enough to look just like them. It's the fact that other people might think you are them. And since you don't actually work for the company, Disney can't control how you portray that character and interact with guests. That being said, there are three ways you can get around this rule. A, you can be 13 years old or younger. Kiddos are more than welcome to get all spruced up as their favorite character if they so desire. In fact, there's a whole Bibbidi Bobbidi Boutique experience over at Magic Kingdom solely dedicated to getting those younger members of your group a royal makeover that they can show off around the park. You do have to make reservations for the experience ahead of time, and it can be a little pricey, like $75 to $200 per kid. But kids are also totally allowed to wear any of their character costume pieces from back home too without parents having to spend an extra dime. Just make sure that if a mask comes along with a kiddo's costume, it's not gonna obstruct their vision. According to the Disney website, masks must have openings that allow the eyes to be fully seen. Now, second way to get around this particular rule, attend Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party. Costume rules get kicked out the window during Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party over at Magic Kingdom. During that time, anyone who's purchased an event ticket will be able to dress up to the nines to represent their favorite character, even if it's not a Disney one. There are still rules you have to follow, like not wearing full masks or bringing in weapons or weapon-like props, but other than that, this is gonna be your one shining moment to be twinsies with that character you love and adore. Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party normally normally takes place on select nights starting in mid-August and on up until Halloween night. And another thing you can do to look just like your favorite character without getting kicked out of the parks is to Disney bound. This means you can wear regular outfits that represent the characters without flat out transforming into them. For example, if you were bounding as Belle, you might wear a yellow sundress to nod to Belle's iconic gown and carry a bright red purse, a nod to the rose in the movie. Bounding as Prince Eric might involve a white shirt, blue pants, a red belt, and a stuffed sheepdog. To know whether your bounding is getting too close to an actual costume, a good rule of thumb could be to ask yourself, could a child reasonably mistake me for the real character? If the answer is yes, or maybe, then you'll want to adjust your outfit, just to be on the safe side. If you'd like a cape to go along with your Disney bounding attire for maybe a character like Elsa or Darkwing Duck, I don't know why that was the second character that came to my head, but he definitely wears a cape. You just have to make sure the cape does not go below your waist. Or if you're Edna Mode, just ditch the cape completely. No capes. Another way to get kicked out of Disney World is being too young. Isn't Disney World supposed to be a place for all ages, AJ? Technically, yes, yeah it is, but more specifically, it's a place for all families. You have to be at least 14 years old to enter the parks by yourself. Otherwise, you must be accompanied by an adult or another group member who's at least 14 years old. Basically, if a guest is still young enough to dress up as one of the Disney characters and not get kicked out for it, then they're too young to be in the parks all by themselves. You know how they say curiosity killed the cat? Or rather, in this case, curiosity killed your ability to return to the most magical place on Earth? Disney World isn't just a theme park, you see, it's one big elaborate show. So anywhere that guests are allowed to meander is considered on stage. 
while the areas made just for cast members are backstage. That's why Disney staff are called cast members in the first place. The more you know. Disney takes keeping the magic of their show alive very seriously, so when a guest tries to sneak peek into the backstage areas, there's a possibility that you won't just get kicked out of the parks, but maybe even completely banned from them, depending on the situation. It's not just the illusion making Disney's trying to preserve here, it's all about guest safety too. There could be all kinds of projects going on backstage that may be dangerous for guests who don't have any training or experience with those projects. So if you see an area labeled for cast members only, it's not a suggestion, it's a rule. If you're really curious to take a backstage look and see how Disney World continues to pull off the show every single day, then you may want to consider adding a behind the scenes tour to your upcoming visit. On the Enchanting Extras page of the Disney World website, you can find all sorts of bonus experiences to tack onto your Disney World trip, including several tours that'll take you behind the scenes legally. One of the most popular tours among Disney fans is the Keys to the Kingdom tour that takes place in Magic Kingdom. This is a five hour walking guided experience offering behind the scenes access to some of Disney World's most hidden areas. One of the big tour highlights include VIP access to the famous but only seen by cast members, Utilidor Tunnels constructed underneath Magic Kingdom. And you know all that talk about preserving the magic we mentioned earlier? Yeah, you gotta brace yourself for this tour because the magic is definitely gonna be momentarily stripped, but in a cool way. The Utilidors are buzzing with activity, with their special trash removal system and endless supplies of bubble wands and light up toys inside an area cast members refer to as the glow cage, and even the super secret Mouseketeria where cast members and characters can pick up a bite to eat while on their break. All the while, you'll also be learning little known facts and history tidbits about the park itself. Prices for the tour are about $129 to $149 per person on top of your regular day ticket, but that price does cover lunch and a commemorative gift. You can book online or through the My Disney Experience app. The next thing that can get you kicked out of Disney World is taking and sharing forbidden pictures. Huh. Now, Disney is all about the whole memory making and picture taking and sharing all your exciting Disney adventures with everyone on social media life. Unless you cross the line. There have been rumors that some celebrities have taken secret bathroom selfies and posted them online when they weren't supposed to and got banned from the parks for a while. But we won't go into that because we don't have all the specific details. But there are other photo rules you'll want to follow to make sure you're staying on Disney's good side. For starters, if you're taking one of those backstage tours, like the ones in the last point, you cannot take photos of what's going on behind the scenes. This goes for cast members too. What happens in the Utilidors stays in the Utilidors. Otherwise, you're going to be in hot water. It's also not okay to record or take pictures inside dark rides or shows while using flash photography because it's super distracting to everyone, including the person taking the picture. While someone who uses flash photography once or twice on a ride may not be kicked out of the park immediately, they could be if they're a repeat offender. After all, the Disney World website does state that they do have the right to ask guests to leave the park if said guest refuses to follow Disney's rules. It's all just a matter of the severity of the case. Now, one last picture rule that may not have even crossed your mind before, you're not allowed to hire outside commercial photography sessions for a cute family Disney shoot. Yep, you're more than welcome to take your own camera into the park, but hiring a photographer or company who doesn't work for the parks is a no-go. Instead, you may wanna book a capture the moment session, which you can also find on the Enchanting Extras page on that Disney World website. This is gonna hook you up with a private, uninterrupted 20 minute photo session with a Disney Photo Pass photographer inside one of the parks. Or, you know, you can just track down a PhotoPass photographer during your park day and ask for a quick pic. PhotoPass photographers can take professional photos on their personal camera, which will cost you extra if you decide you want to download it. Or you can hand over your phone and have them snap a picture for you that way for free. There will be times during a Disney vacation where folks will start feeling like they've had it up to here with the heat and the lines and the exhaustion and the super high prices, and that's understandable. But when you start to take your frustrations out on cast members or other guests, that's, well, that's just not fair. In December 2022, Disney decided to create a new specific rule to address the courtesy issue. This rule advises guests that they must always remember to treat others with respect, kindness, and compassion. Those who can't live up to this simple wish may be asked to leave Walt Disney World Resort. That's a direct quote from the website. So Disney's not fooling around here. During and after COVID and the parks requiring people to wear masks, the cast members 
were straight up abused quite a bit by guests who didn't want to wear those masks and wanted to fight them on it and uh, horrible things happened. So I am so glad that now there's an actual point on the website that explains you better be kind or you're out of here. So the next time you're in Disney World and are exhausted or frustrated or whatever the case may be, remember to be the magic you want to see in the world, as Disney puts it. Step away to take a breather if you feel like you're on the edge of a meltdown. While you can't control the way others act inside the parks, you can always keep yourself in check. Just remember to stay hydrated and fed, take plenty of sit-down breaks in the shade as needed. Now, believe it or not, sadly, you can't kick back in your folding chair in Disney World. Look, I know how uncomfy it can be standing around waiting for the Festival of Fantasy Parade to come by or bruising your tailbone by sitting on the curb for what feels like forever. But a problem can't be solved by another problem. Folding chairs are indeed on the banned items list found on the Disney World website. Due to safety reasons and generally blocking the pathways for others, you can't bring in your lawn chair. Trust me, Disney's paths get bottlenecked enough as it is without a bunch of lawn chairs. So if you're looking for a seat during the Festival of Fantasy Parade, you may be better going to a restaurant that's settled on the parade route, like Tony's Town Square or Crystal Palace or Columbia Harbor House. While you're never guaranteed visibility of the parade if you're dining at one of these locations, you'll have a better chance if you know what to ask for. At Tony's, request sitting out on the patio instead of inside the dining room. At Crystal Palace, request a table by one of the windows that has a clear view of Cinderella Castle. And Columbia Harbor House, well, you get to choose your seat there. Head upstairs and grab a table next to the window looking out across Liberty Square. Disney isn't just a place where humans are allowed to wander. Lots of different little creatures like to meander the parks too. Like those Disney squirrels and Disney ducks and those scary looking white ibis birds with the really long bills that look like they could probably snap your arm in two and sometimes they steal your french fries. And get this, they don't even have to pay to be there. They're just allowed to live happily in Disney World. Now, even though these animals frequent the parks and may attempt to harass you for food, you're not allowed to harass them back, or at all, for that matter. Disney's website states that feeding, petting, touching, harassing, or harming any wildlife, including birds, is prohibited. And that's not just to keep the animals safe, though it is a very big part of it. Disney wants to keep you safe too. For instance, if the wildlife gets too used to accepting small smackerels from guests, they could get dependent on it, and that could start making them more aggressive, going from begging with those big beady eyes to just snatching the food right off your table like little bandits, which we have had happen to us. If you really, really, really want to pet one of Disney's animal residents without the reprimand, then it's best to take a trip over to Animal Kingdom and hitch a ride on the Wilderness Express train located in the Africa section of the park. This train's going to take you to Rafiki's Planet Watch, which has a few different interactive stations that you can check out, including the Affection section, which is a petting zoo. At the Affection section, you can pet and mingle with animals like sheep and goats and cows and pigs. And fun fact alert, you can meet the real live Pua here too, you know, Moana's little sidekick. Animal Kingdom is home to Charlotte, a kune kune piggy, and kune kunes are small, domesticated pigs that generally have a docile, friendly nature. So Disney animators knew that's the type of piggy they wanted Pua to be. While artists were working on the Moana movie, they visited Charlotte when she was just a little piglet to study her for the film. So instead of getting kicked out of the park by petting animals who don't want to be petted, you can meet a legit movie star instead. Sounds like a much better trade-off. Now, sadly, y'all, you can't climb on the scenery in Disney World. Climbing around the Boneyard at Animal Kingdom? Approved. Climbing around the circus theme playground while waiting to ride Dumbo the Flying Elephant in Magic Kingdom? Also approved. Climbing the Pyramid in Epcot's Mexico Pavilion? Mm, not approved. We're gonna stop you right there. Climbing on rocks and statues, walls, or anything that's not explicitly labeled as something to be climbed on presents an obvious safety hazard to guests. So, like, don't do it. Not to mention it could damage the set pieces that cast members have worked hard to maintain and Imagineers have worked hard to create. And this doesn't go for just the outdoor sets, but the indoor ones too. When a guest enters an attraction, whether it be on a ride or for a show, you gotta stay seated unless otherwise told. No scaling the stages, no jumping out of the ride vehicle, none of that. Cause all that's gonna accomplish in the end is getting someone banned from the parks for life and ruining the attraction experience for everyone else. And that's no fun. Now, I love the fact that there are so many of y'all out there who have made New Year's resolutions to open up a small business and sell your art and merch at festivals or in those online shops or both. But selling your stuff on Disney grounds is going to get you the boot, unless you and Disney have both sorted that out beforehand. According to the Disney World website, the sale of goods or services or the display of goods or services is not allowed. However, even if you can't sell your stuff at Disney, it can still be a great place for a stroke of inspiration where you can get a lot of work done if you want to. 
If you're looking to work on your art or writing or whatever else it may be that you're tinkering with, there are several places around the Disney World resorts that provide quiet environments for optimal work conditions. This includes the Carrollwood Pacific Railroad Room in the Boulder Ridge Villas of Wilderness Lodge, the Bellevue Lounge at Disney's Boardwalk Inn, and the Voyager's Lounge at Disney's Riviera Resort. So wait a minute, Disney sells balloons, right? So why should bringing the same balloon that you bought at one Disney park wind up getting you kicked out of a different Disney park? Well, it all depends on the park. While Magic Kingdom, Hollywood Studios, and Epcot are balloon friendly, Animal Kingdom is not. You're not gonna find them for sale here and you're definitely not gonna be allowed through the front gates with one. But it's not because Animal Kingdom hates balloons and anyone associated with them, it's to keep their animal residents safe. If a balloon were to escape and land in an animal's habitat, it could potentially be a serious choking hazard for them, and nobody wants that. But it's not just Animal Kingdom Park that forbids balloons on the premises, it's Animal Kingdom Resort too, since they've got a full-on savanna to look after. So if you're planning on staying at this deluxe hotel, don't bother investing in a balloon at one of the other three parks, unless you're okay with deflating it and putting it in your bag before heading back to the resort. Along with Animal Kingdom and its anti-balloon policy, you're also not allowed to bring balloons to either of the Disney water parks or ESPN Wide World of Sports Complex, since they could present a safety hazard for other guests, apparently. So what happens if a guest is unaware of these restrictions and tries to bring a balloon anyway? Well, Disney is not going to walk you away in handcuffs, if that's what you're wondering. However, if you're trying to bring it into the facility, you're not going to make it past the front gate. Cast members can hold the balloon at the front of the park or in the baggage area of the hotel if need be. Just don't forget about it and leave it there. By the way, when I mentioned deflating the balloon, that is really a thing. You can deflate those balloons and then when you get home, you can take them to one of those places that has helium like, you know, Party City or your local grocery store and ask them to fill up the balloon for you. And then you've got your balloon all refilled just like new and ready to bring a little bit of Disney magic home. Disney's totally cool with you bringing your own non-alcoholic beverages into the parks, like refillable water bottles or juice boxes, or even that bottle of Dr. Pepper you might have purchased at the Swan and Dolphin before making your way over, since you're not gonna find Dr. Pepper anywhere else in the Disney bubble. But when it comes to bringing your own beer, wine, or liquor, that's a big red X, my friends. The Disney World parks and resorts may sell alcohol, but they're very particular about where you're taking it around their property. So. While bringing your own alcohol inside one of the theme parks may be a more obvious no-no, the fact that you can't take alcoholic drinks out of the parks that you purchase them from may be a little more shocking. That's why when you're in Epcot, you'll see people chugging down the last sip of their drinks that they grabbed from the France or UK pavilion before they're allowed to exit through the International Gateway. But here's a little interesting factoid for you. Outside alcohol is in fact allowed in the Disney Resort hotels, just as long as it isn't carried or consumed by anyone under the age of 21. You also won't be able to sip your drink inside a resort pool, so prepare to enjoy your adult beverage on a lounge chair from a safe distance. It doesn't matter how gnarly or sick your skateboard moves are, Disney does not want you performing frontside flips in front of Cinderella Castle. The only thing getting around the parks on wheels that's not already part of the park experience are mobility devices and strollers, but even those have their restrictions too, which you can learn more about on the Disney World website. Skateboards, scooters, inline skates, and shoes with built-in wheels, do kids still wear those? Let me know in the comments, are all banned from the parks and resorts. The only key exception to this rule is bicycles. They are permitted within designated Disney resort areas. You might even be able to rent them at your resort too. There are four resorts that have bike rentals available. Old Key West, Port Orleans Riverside, Saratoga Springs Resort, and Disney's Fort Wilderness Resort. Each of these resorts besides Fort Wilderness also have two to four person Surrey bikes available to rent. You can also rent a Surrey bike over at Disney's Boardwalk Inn as well. Bike rentals range in price from nine to 20 bucks and are all available on first come first serve basis. Disney will also provide you with complimentary helmets to go along with your bike rentals. Next on our list of things that are gonna get you kicked out of Disney World, causing a ruckus. No, I'm not talking about screaming on the rides or cheering when the fireworks go off. I'm talking about those artificial noisemakers, like the ones Great Aunt Myrtle will pull out of her purse and blast from the bleachers at a high school graduation. No, you're, no your, your aunt doesn't do that? Cool. Anyway, Disney has banned all artificial noisemakers from the parks, including horns, whistles, and large megaphones. Even if someone wants to show their true appreciation of how much they're enjoying a show or parade or nighttime spectacular, these noisemakers can ruin other guests' experiences and can be super distracting for the live performers too. 
So just a round of applause will suffice, or even a friendly wave. You don't need to bring your megaphone to talk about how much you like the people mover, even though we all understand. Now, I think this next one is more of a surprise entry because people still actually try to do this, and it's wild. Sometimes you might hear cast members talking about a code A while in the Disney parks, which, to put it bluntly, means that human remains have been found in a ride or attraction. Yeah, intense stuff. But don't let your imagination run rampant now. The A stands for ashes, and yes, Disney had to place ash spreading on their band activities list over time because this is actually a problem cast members see in the parks. Over the years, quite a few people have been caught spreading a loved one's ashes at various places around property, especially inside the Haunted Mansion. If a guest is caught doing this, they'll be escorted out of the park, which is reason enough not to do it in the first place. But it's also worth noting that ashes don't stay where they're spread, since the attractions are cleaned regularly. Usually the ashes scatter enough so that evidence is left behind on the doom buggies. If a code A is suspected, you might see cast members hopping into a doom buggy or walking around the attraction with a black light, because a weird thing about ashes is that they glow and have a bit of pink tint to them underneath the black light. Once cast members confirm with the black light that ashes have been spilled, a maintenance team has to come clean up the ashes in a suit that looks like it came straight out of Ghostbusters. This means that, yep, the ride has to be closed for a certain amount of time so that the maintenance crew can clean up a biohazard. Now, sadly, this is another no-no in Disney World, and it's a bummer for me because I wish I could do it, and that's getting those sweet aerial shots. Let's talk about drones. We see you there flying high in the sky, getting all those awesome pictures and videos, but unfortunately, we can't use you to hover over Disney World property. Not at the resorts, not at the parks, not at Disney Springs, not anywhere. Many parts of Disney World are officially no-fly zones, including the Magic Kingdom, sections of Epcot, and some of the resort areas. But even if you aren't currently hanging out in a no-fly zone, Disney still won't let you fly a drone for security reasons. But fear not, there's still a way to achieve a really cool aerial shot with the help of some PhotoPass Photog friends. Super Zoom is a magic style shot that starts with a close up look at you and your group, then it'll zoom out to show more of the park and keep zooming out way out before finally zooming back to your group's photo. I know, it's very cool. All four parks have a Super Zoom shot that you can track down. Magic Kingdoms is near Cinderella Castle. In the grassy area near the fountains, we call it the Hub Grass. Hollywood Studios is in Galaxy's Edge near Docking Bay 7, Food and Cargo. Animal Kingdoms is at the Everest Riverside Theater, and Epcot's is close to Spaceship Earth. Now, here's a bonus one for you. You'd think this would be self-explanatory, and yet back in November 2023 over in Disneyland, cast members had to handle a rather bare circumstance over at It's a Small World. A man aboard the dark ride ended up hopping out of the boat, stripping off his clothes, and walking around the sets. Several sources stated that the man was escorted from the park following the incident after they finally found him swimming in the It's a Small World water. And according to the Los Angeles Magazine, Disney security was assisted by the Anaheim police with this situation. They said the 26-year-old offender was hospitalized and then arrested for indecent exposure and being under the influence. The important takeaway of this video is just to stay alert. Make sure you know about these rules before heading into the parks. It's easy to accidentally break some of them. You can learn more about Disney's rules and regulations on their website and by keeping up with the DFB team, since we'll always alert you when we hear about a new Disney rule or policy being rolled out. By the way, don't forget to pick up the free Disney World planning worksheets right now over at DisneyFoodBlog.com slash Disney plans. Those are going to be super helpful, and I promise there's nothing illegal in them. Thanks for listening, everyone, and thanks for watching. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.